welcome to episode two of our walk around baby blue. I uh, hope you're all keeping well and staying, stay at home and stay out of the way. Keep everybody safe. So we're going to look at the braking system now. Um, give you a walk around that, see what you think of all that there. Start at the back, work our way forward. So at the back we have a, a 266mm vented disc with a four pot AP caliper. Uh, we run a DS3000 compound pad in the back and they seem to work fairly well. Back of an escort doesn't do a lot of work, well not compared to the front anyway. So we've stuck with a size disc and it seems to work well. Uh, you can put a bigger disc there, it's the same size you'd get under a 13 inch wheel. Um, you'll also see some of the classic historic cars uh, would virtually all run this 266mm disc. They run a two pot caliper. Um, that's for historic regulation, um, but we can run a four pot. Uh, funny thing is, the four pot's cheaper to buy than the two pot, uh, go figure. But the back, back's fairly straightforward, fairly traditional. The front is where it gets a bit more high tech and a bit more trick. Uh, we run this new Alcon R5 style caliper, uh, which work really, really well. Um, they like a, like a skeleton affair, so they're fairly open. Uh, but really rigidly, rigid structurally are really strong. The probably the openness of them is why they stay so cool. So they're really good to keep uh, dispersing the heat. Uh, we've only had them on this season, but so far we're really, really happy with them. They come uh, with a 316 mil disc, which is pretty much the biggest disc I think you can get under a 15 inch wheel. They have, I run a carbon rain CL pads. Uh, in an RC6 compound. Been using them quite a while. Very happy with them as a, as a pad, nice bite, even from cold, and a real positive braking feel. So the probably the only down point of them is they're a wee bit sore in the discs. So anytime I need pads, I really need discs. Uh, and that would usually be at the start of the season and the middle of the season. So uh, two sets of discs and two sets of pads would usually get me through a year. The kit comes with this Alcon kit, uh, URM Sport does this kit and they come with, it comes with its own bell because it's a different diameter from the normal discs that's used in the front of an escort but it all fits on, straight bolt on to uh, Group 4 mo uh, Fabrications Modular set up at the front which we'll go through in another video uh, but that works really well there. I'll show you the floor mounted pedal box. Some bottle scar still left in this car from Escort Solo which I'll be taking into shortly get fixed back up again. So a, a tilting floor mounted paddle box. It's not something I've ever really been uh, pushed on for up till the begin, uh, end of last year. We would always run your normal group four paddle box, the, the hanging paddle box basically. And I was always happy with that. But as I said earlier in previous video with moving the seating position, um, short legs and all that, we ended up having to go with the floor mounted thing. And I'm really glad I did. Uh, works really well, nice positive feel, easy to set up, uh, you have your normal brake bias to move from left to right to get front to back. Uh, for those who don't know much about this setup, you have a, a front brake mass cylinder and a rear brake mass cylinder and this balance bar just moves back and forth as you adjust it so you can adjust the pressure you put on the front or the back. Uh, some divers like it the more front or more back or whatever, I like it just sort of level in between so when I'm setting it up and I get everything hot on the car and get down the road and you know get my grip levels and everything sorted out, then I'll start braking hard so I can try and lock up four wheels at once. It takes a wee while a bit of messing around and you obviously need a bed brakes in before you can do that. So it's it's time consuming but it's well worth it when it's done. The cool things about the pedal box too is they're really good for Millington because Millington is traditionally a very short uh pedal stroke from off to on. It sometimes can be like a flick switch. Uh, this linkage lets you adjust it so you get a big long paddle so you can oscillate the throttle. You don't have to have full throttle on all the time. As we know with the Millington, it's uh, it's a fairly punchy beast. So full throttle sometimes doesn't get you up the road too quick. Um, induces a load of wheel spin. Um, clutch is a nice short stroke as well. So that setup works really well. I'm really happy with that. I'm glad we did that. What else can I tell you about the brakes? Uh, Brake fluids, I've found over the years that uh, 
A good quality brake fluid is important. Um, I even have a tin of it. I'll tell you what I use. Yeah, I've been using uh, Silkalone Pro, Pro Race. Um, works well. I've been using that quite a few years now. Uh, it's not that massively expensive. And I would change the brake fluid at least twice a year, sometimes three times a year, depending on how many rallies we do. But certainly every five or six rallies, I would change the brake fluid out of the whole system, drain it and replace it. No matter how good a quality fluid you use, uh, they get serious abuse from these things with the amount of heat that's involved. Uh, so you find that at the end of a stage, especially a long stage, uh, when you've been braking hard, you'll get a bit of, maybe, maybe a wee bit of longer paddle towards the end of the stage, uh, which is an indication that your fluid's starting to boil and it's been in there too long. Uh, that's bad enough, but usually when you stop at the stop car and get your time card sorted out and go to drive off because of the heat sink, because you've actually stopped, next time you go to use the brakes, they usually go straight to the floor, which is a wee bit worrying. And then you definitely know you need to change your brake fluid because you've got air in there. It's, it's percolated and it's overheated and it's got aerated. Uh, but that only happened to me once and then I knew what to do from there on. But that's a wee bit of an insight into the braking system. I uh, hope that makes sense to you. If there's any questions I can answer. I may or may not try to answer. Thank you.